By April 1945, the war had finally arrived on Japan's doorstep. Okinawa, only 340 miles from the Japanese mainland. Nineteen hundred kamikaze missions were unleashed. To defend the island, 15-year-old students were used as human landmines. What we did was to carry a small mine on our back, dig a small hole in the field, hide, and when the noise was close enough, we were supposed to jump out and go under one of the caterpillars. The Battle of Okinawa lasted for nearly three months. Many of the civilians hid in caves. Tomi Kohiga was six years old. She was separated from her family and wandering alone. In one cave, an old couple made her a white flag and urged the child to surrender. I beg them, Grandpa and Grandma, please don't chase me away. I want to die here. She had been told that American soldiers would cut women and children into pieces. When I came out, I saw American soldiers, and one of them was standing there with a black box. I thought right away that they were going to kill me with that thing. My father once said to me, even if you're about to be killed by an enemy soldier, don't die crying like a baby. Smile for the enemy when you die. So, thinking that that was it, I waved at them. But why does the soldier look so kind when he's about to kill someone? The Japanese suffered a disastrous defeat at Okinawa. The Japanese High Command then issued orders for an all-out mobilization at home, a final desperate push to save the nation. It's true that uh, 100 million people are being mobilized and ready for Paris, ready to Paris, you see. Looking back, and what, a, what a terrible you know, idea they asking the whole population to perish for any cause, you see. The Japanese High Command had planned that the Japanese army would be joined by virtually the entire civilian population to defend against the Americans on the beaches in the event of an invasion. The High Command had not anticipated an attack by air. In the course of the Second World War, all the main belligerents, including the United States, bombed civilians deliberately. During the Blitz of 1940 and 41, even as Britain denounced German barbarism, British leaders bombed Germany. 
At first, Royal Air Force planes bombed German military and industrial targets during daylight. But when they switched to night attack so as to avoid losses, they found that the smallest visible target was often an entire town. In early 1942, the British Air Ministry instructed RAF Bomber Command to target, quote, the morale of the enemy civil population, unquote. This meant Germany's cities and Germany's civilians. That spring and summer, the Royal Air Force launched what it called thousand plane raids against Cologne, Essen, Bremen. Now the object of tonight's operation is to blot out the town of Bremen. Now to introduce the man behind the thousand plane raids, Air Marshal Harris, CNC Bomber Command. Harris was quite confident that he was going to be able to win the war by using the kinds of methods uh, that some people f perhaps felt uh, were not wholly moral because they involved such enormous casualties to civilians. Air Marshal Harris continued to have the support of his government. In July 1943, Royal Air Force planes loaded with high explosive and incendiary bombs took off for Hamburg. Harris's objective, total destruction. There had been attacks before, but this surpassed everything. You could feel the impact of the bombs kilometers away. The roaring in the air was indescribable. The street where we lived was lined with tall linden trees, and they all bent towards the south. They set a fire which became what is called a firestorm. And huge winds were created of hurricane force so that giant trees were torn by their roots and people were thrown into the fire. Huge convection currents are created by the heat which intensifies the fire itself so that temperatures reached a thousand degrees centigrade, hot enough to melt pots and pans and things like that. In four nights of bombing, the Royal Air Force destroyed three quarters of the city, killed an estimated 45,000 civilians, and left nearly a million people homeless. The United States Air Force had helped the RAF in Hamburg, but had bombed only during daylight and targeted only military installations. February the 3rd, 1945, American commanders abandoned their long-hell policy of not targeting civilians. Nearly a thousand American planes attacked Berlin. Twenty-five thousand Germans were killed. This cruelty against civilians, in order to us, it was said, end the war as quickly as possible. That really was indescribably cruel. We didn't direct our anger at National Socialism, which had put us in this situation, but rather our anger was directed at the British and at the Americans for bringing civilians into the war like this. Eleven days later, on February the 14th, the Allies joined forces to bomb Dresden, the cultural center of Germany. In two days and one night, they destroyed the heart of the city and left 50,000 people dead. It was a, a, a great embarrassment 
to the people who were responsible. Uh, Winston Churchill altered the minutes that he was putting in the record to make it appear uh, that he was less responsible. The Americans began to what we call cook the books so as to make it appear that the kinds of things that happened there had not been done with the kind of intention that indeed they had been done with. Having dealt a death blow to Nazi Germany, the United States now prepared its final assault on Japan. The aerial campaign began with the bombing of factories and military installations. In March 1945, Tokyo itself was selected as a target. We received an astounding briefing that just took everybody by surprise. I remember distinctly that there was a loud, audible gasp that went up from the crew as they realized we were going in to over Tokyo at 7,000 feet, not 27,000 feet. This is the most heavily defended city of Japan. We were carefully briefed with the full knowledge that the area to which we were assigned was in the densest part of Tokyo. The planes were stripped of their guns so that they could carry the maximum bomb load of 10 tons. On the evening of March the 9th, 325 super fortresses arrived over the Japanese capital. All of a sudden, the blast from airplanes came over like a roar. It shook the windows and made a sound. We all ran. From the west came a huge blanket of black smoke. When we penetrated that cloud, we ran into these uh, very strong odors that seemed like it had to be associated with uh, a terrible tragedy. And I, I just describe it as the smell of death. I saw my mother trip. Her hair stood on end and she screamed. Then she fell off the bridge into the black smoke with my baby brother strapped onto her back. I think she was trying to save my father, but he went down with her into the smoke. After we uh, dropped our bombs, I could look right down upon the city burning below us. It looked like a part of Tokyo had dropped down into hell that night. In one night, American firebombs killed 80,000 civilians. Tokyo was only the beginning. 65 more Japanese cities would be bombed in this fashion. Japan was being pulverized. It was only a few years earlier that Americans said, this is barbaric. Coming to the position that we must systematically bomb civilian populations to end the war, and that this is proper and appropriate and even moral, is an extraordinary moral and psychological journey, and in my view, a journey toward hell. On August the 6th, 1945, one plane and one bomb over Hiroshima. The entire town of Hiroshima was burning, and you can see the famous mushroom clouds. I've seen 500, 600 people burn, hurt. Some of them did. A lot of people float in the river. Some of them swimming, some of them dead. Our main street was turned into a showcase of human cruelty. 
If the blast hits you directly, 